Hi everyone, it's Ali here with more songwriting tips for you. In this video, I'm going to look at the melodic math approach to songwriting, which was made famous by Max Martin. I was sent a question by Sean Dalton who wanted to know all about this approach. So in this lesson, I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to look at what it is, what it isn't, and most importantly, how you can use it in your own songwriting. Before we get into looking what melodic math is, I first want to talk about the man that's made this songwriting approach so famous, Max Martin. He's had more hits in the modern era than anyone else and is third on the all-time list behind Paul McCartney and John Lennon. He's written hits for Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Jessie J, Ariana Grande, Kelly Clarkson, Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, and the list goes on and on and on. Due to the amount of success he's had over such a sustained period of time, people have often wondered if there's a formula behind his success. If you do any research on Max Martin and look into how he writes his songs, read any interviews with the people he's worked with, you'll see the phrase that melodic math comes up time and time again. This is an approach to songwriting that he's made famous there's, to be honest, not that much known about it. You have to kind of piece bits of information together to try and understand what it is. So hopefully in this video, I'm going to piece that together through research I've done and help you understand what melodic math is and how you can use it in your own songwriting. Although a lot of these songwriting principles may seem very basic, very much songwriting 101-ish type stuff, you need to understand that it's not so much the principles that makes Max Martin so successful, but how strictly he sticks to them. Also realise that in this video, it's not going to be everything there is to do with melodic math. A, I probably couldn't fit it into the time we have, but also not much is known about melodic math and a lot of it's not been made public and it's only really known by Max Martin and the people he collaborates with. So there's obviously a lot more to melodic math that we don't know about, but I'm sure by watching this video, you can still gain a lot of insight and helpful tips to improve your own songwriting. So rule number one, melody is king. Now this is true of nearly all modern pop songwriting, but perhaps to Max Martin more than anyone else. In an interview he said, I can only speak for myself when I say that writing the melody first gives me more freedom than doing it the other way around. It's very important to have a great melody. If you have one, build your song around that. Don't make it too complicated. He's more inclined to fit the syllables to the notes of the melody and not worry too much about whether the resulting line actually makes sense. In melodic math, the lyrics are really there to serve the melody. Bonnie McKee, who's a famous lyricist and worked with Max Martin on In California Girls, said, it's very mathematical. A line has to have a certain number of syllables and the next line has to be its mirror image. If you add one syllable or take it away, it's a completely different melody to Max. I can write something I think is really clever, but if it doesn't hit the ear right, then Max isn't really interested. The pattern in the chorus of California Girls is A, B, C, A, B, D, A, B, C, A, B, D. Here's the four lines of the chorus sectioned out to show the mirror. Because of this approach to the melody, Max Martin's songs are often extremely catchy. This often obviously helps them chart very well and is one of the reasons that Max Martin has been so successful over recent years. So rule number two is that they continue to hit the chorus almost exclusively within the first 50 seconds. Now again, this may seem like a fairly common trait of modern pop songs, but it wasn't something that was that common before Max Martin came along. And even songwriters nowadays don't use it anywhere near as consistently as he does. They'll either start with the chorus, or they'll make sure if they've written, say, a verse, a pre-chorus and a chorus, if they haven't hit that chorus by 50 seconds, they'll immediately cut out that pre-chorus to make sure they hit that chorus within those first 50 seconds. They want you to be hit by that catchy chorus as quickly as possible, 
to make sure you're hooked to that song and want to hear it over and over again. We look at a few examples, you can see how consistently he uses this rule. You can see from just these few examples how they either start with the chorus or hit that chorus within the first 50 seconds. Rule number three is that they only use three to four melodic parts per song and they only introduce one part at a time. In a recent interview, Max Martin said, there mustn't be too much information in the soundstage. Clarity is something I'm struggling with a lot. There must be no new items coming in at the same time, one thing at a time, like in a movie. You cannot present 10 characters in the first scene. You want to get to know one before you're ready for the next one. Getting the most out of a small number of parts is something that Max Martin has become extremely famous for. He's very well known for being able to take a arrangement of a song and to be able to cut it back to just its key elements. Being able to do this really helps remove any distractions from the song and therefore makes the song as catchy as possible for the listener. Rule number four is the recycling of melodic parts. This kind of goes hand in hand with what we said in rule three, but this time it refers specifically to recycling the same melodic part over and over throughout the song using it first, for example, in a verse, and then using it later as a different part within a chorus. This way, the listener gains familiarity as they listen throughout their song. And familiarity is a really important attractor within life, not just within music. And there's a psychological effect known as the mere exposure effect that explains this. The mere exposure effect is a psychological phenomenon by where people are attracted to something purely because they are familiar with it. So by having melodies repeated throughout your songs, it really helps to make the listener feel familiar with this song after only a short time listening. This makes them hook to the song so much quicker and therefore want to hear the song over and over again. So by repeating melodic phrases throughout the song, you're playing into this mere exposure effect and creating familiarity with the listener. By the time they've heard this song even halfway through, they already feel like they already know this song incredibly well and this really helps them to get hooked to the song and want to listen to it over and over again. A nice example we can look at is E.T. by Katy Perry, where you have the verse melody recycled and used again in the beginning of the chorus. Rule five is to create balance. If he's written a verse melody that has a lot of rhythm to it, he'll contrast that with a very unrhythmic chorus melody. For example, he'll use longer notes in the melody and that will help contrast with the more rhythmic verse. Or it might be that if he started on the beat for the verse melody, when it comes to the chorus, he'll start on the offbeat. In an interview, he said, Sweet and salt might be a description that's easier to grasp. You need a balance at all times. If the verse is a bit messy, you need to make it less messy right after. It needs to vary. Shake It Off is a good example, where the math behind the drama is pretty clear. If the chords change a lot over the course of the song, it's better to stay within the same melodic structure. Once again, it's all about the balance. Recycling melodic parts again adds to that mere exposure effect we were talking about before. This helps the song to feel extremely familiar with the listener after only a few times of having heard it and adds to that catchiness that all pop songs are looking for. So in conclusion to this video, I want to look at what we can take away from the melodic math approach. To me, melodic math isn't really a formula. It's more of a toolbox that Max Martin uses to help him consistently write hit songs. When he's stuck, he'll dip into that toolbox and use the ideas that he knows has helped him write successful songs in the past. 
I think this toolbox idea is something we need to continually add to and keep updating for our own songwriting. I've talked about it a bit already in episodes two and five, so if you haven't watched those already, please go back and watch those. You'll find it incredibly helpful. I think this is something that I found helpful already in my songwriting journey, and I'm sure it's something that if you continue to build your songwriting toolbox over the years, you'll find it really helps you to write better and better songs. So Sean, thanks so much for your question. I hope that answered all you wanted to know about melodic math. Everyone else, I hope you found it really helpful too and that you can then take these ideas and use them in your own songwriting. If you've got a question you'd like me to answer, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't done already and you like this video, please like and subscribe below. And I'll see you again in the next video.